Welcome back. Today we are going to take a look at one of the more interesting watches I've seen in a while, and it's from a very small micro brand based out of Amsterdam. Now they're taking a classically styled 39mm case, combining it with a sandwich dial and a GMT movement, as well as a whole lot of bold colors here. It's called the Cosmopolite GMT from Batavi Watches. I've been keeping an eye on this one since last September, and a few months ago they emailed me to ask if I'd like to take a look at their prototype before their Kickstarter launch, so they lent me this one for a couple of weeks. And do remember that this is a prototype, so they're not always perfect. There are currently six proposed colorways, each named after a particular place in the world. I would say that this is one of the more bolder choices, but I don't think that'd be accurate at all, as they all have a bit of dramatic flair to them. And this particular one is the Los Angeles version. Now, as someone who was born and raised in Southern California, I gotta say that this seems more like Miami to me than LA. But either way, let's take a closer look. Here, we're talking about a slightly smaller diver at 39 millimeters wide without the crown. Width is more like 43. You also have a lug to lug of 48 millimeters. So overall, the footprint's gonna be comfortable for most people. You also have a great total thickness here for a GMT at 12.5 millimeters. I've seen way too many other companies pushing that closer to 15, which just makes it hard to wear during winter. You also have your standard water resistance of 200 meters, as well as a 20 millimeter lug width. Not to mention a nice weight at 145 grams, and that's with the bracelet. I think the watch by itself is closer to 75. So overall, it's just going to be a really comfortable watch that you can almost forget you're wearing. There are two types of divers out there. You have the ones that are more tool-like and the ones that are more dressy. And the Cosmopolite is definitely in that later category. This is a watch that just loves to play with the light, as practically every surface on it reflects it in some way. The case is classically styled with these long slender lugs that extend out, and practically every angle here is highly polished. With the exception of a small chamfered edge that runs the length of each side, and that's brushed. And overall it just looks beautiful, and I think brilliant when you pair it with a supplied bracelet. On the side you can also notice drilled lugs, which normally I love. But here you can see that they're just hitting that chamfered edge, and I think it looks a little bit off. However, from the same angle, you can see the double-domed sapphire crystal, and I like how it rises just slightly out of that bezel. The overall look just flows together nicely, and everything is a good tight fit. While the top is mostly polished, the rear is mostly brushed, which includes an exhibition case back where you can see the Etta movement. You also have a screw-down crown at the 3, and without any crown guards, I think it looks just a little bit oversized at least proportionally, but it is easy to get a hold of and manipulate. It is signed with the letters BA, and I think that looks okay, but I think they'd be better off figuring out some sort of logo, or maybe just a really stylized B. Overall, it's just a beautiful case with a nice finishing. Yet as beautiful as this case is, when you look at the watch as a whole, it's really playing second fiddle to the vibrant colors that are coming out of the dial and the bezel. The bezel is both one of the Cosmopolite's greatest assets and liabilities. Its strengths are that it has a coin edge and a loomed sapphire covered insert. And the insert here, as well as all the Cosmopolites, is just vibrantly colored. This one is the Los Angeles, and it has this purple, maybe fuchsia top with a gray bottom. And that's a sentence I never thought I'd say out loud. While it's beautiful to look at, these vibrant colors are also a potential weakness, because not everyone is going to want one, but I'll talk more about that in a bit. The bigger issue here is the bezel's action. Now first off, it's bi-directional and not much backplay, which is really good, but it is only 60 click, and for a GMT that causes some potential issues, as you can't really line up those odd hours. If you don't know what I'm talking about, think about it this way. With a 60 click bezel, there's going to be 5 clicks between the 24 and the 2, which means there's 2.5 between the 24 and the 1. So you can never perfectly line up that 1. Now you can still use it, especially because this is a GMT and you can independently move that GMT hand, but it's just not ideal. 
but it is something that can be fixed by either going to 120 click or a 24 click bezel. The other issue with the bezel is that it's just really hard to get a grip on. It's not very tall and it doesn't extend much beyond the case, so it's just kind of hard to turn. But let's move on to the dial. And the dial here is one of the most interesting colors I've ever come across. And I'm not sure the camera is going to capture it properly. It's a highly reflective brown copper color. But in certain lighting conditions, you see some purple hues to it. It's very striking to look at, especially when the light hits it just right and you can fully appreciate the sunburst effect it has. The downside to this dial is that it is also highly reflective which made capturing it just a little difficult. But even with that reflectiveness, I think there was enough color contrast here between the indices, the hands, and the dial to always make out the time rather easily. Now, as you can tell, this is a sandwich dial, and a pretty good looking one at that. I really like the off yellow color that's on the bottom layer. It just matches brilliantly with that copper and makes the red on the GMT hand really pop. You also have a chapter ring that encompasses the entire dial, and it's more of a matte brown, which I think creates a nice border between the reflectiveness of the dial and the vibrant colors of the bezel. Although oftentimes that chapter ring does look a bit distorted, and that's just due to its positioning in relation to the edge of the crystal. The hands are a great length, and I think they stand out brilliantly against the backdrop with their highly polished silver surfaces. And standing back and just taking in the whole dial, as well as the whole watch, it's easy to say that there's a lot going on here, especially when it comes to the color palette. But I think overall, as different as it is, it works well together. And I think you can say that about the entire Cosmopolite line. Choosing to go this way is both an ingenious strategy and a pretty risky one. In the market, there's not a whole lot out there like this, especially when you look at just the micro brands. Most brands choose more conservative color choices and might choose one to be a little more extravagant, but the rest are going to be pretty safe. So going this route, they're doing something that will surely be noticed and remembered. And for those that love this look, I'm sure they're going to jump on it. Yet at the same time, they're kind of aiming for a niche market here. Not everyone is going to want something this vibrant. There's a reason that those black and blue dials are the safe choice. So I think it's going to be interesting to see what goes on with the Kickstarter here. I should also point out that there is a scratch on the dial, and I think it's kind of obvious, so a lot of you have probably already noticed it, which resulted from a mistake during the manufacturing. And remember, this is a prototype, so they're not always perfect, and it's better they screw up here than on the final production model. One of the great things about sandwich dials is that it automatically creates a lot of surface area for loom. So I had some high hopes here for the loom, but unfortunately it kind of disappointed me. Initially it's nice and bright and just looks awesome, especially with that illuminated bezel. Not to mention, I love the diamond shape on the second hand. But I threw it in a comparison test with some other great divers, and this one was easily the first to go out. And watching it, I think the dial and that second hand are the most disappointing parts. So I did a follow-up comparison with a Vostok, just to see how it compared there. And as you can see, it pretty much matches the Vostok for longevity. So at least that's something. But overall, I wouldn't say the loom is good. It's kind of okay-ish. But definitely some room for improvement, especially on a sandwich dial and hopefully that's something they can work on during the Kickstarter. Movement-wise, this has an ETA 2893-2, and it was originally supposed to come with an Elabre grade movement, which I'm sure I'm mispronouncing there, but they recently announced that they couldn't source enough of them, so instead they're going with a higher grade 2893-2, or the exact same price, so that's a bonus. They've also secured a number of Swiss Soprod C125 movements for a less expensive option, which is a movement I'm not familiar with, so I can't really comment on it too much. But ETA is always a great choice, even if it's an expensive one, especially with a reported 50 hour power reserve of the 2893 2. Each watch will come with a bracelet, a NATO, and a rubber strap. And each specific colorway will have a set of colors for those straps and bracelets to match. Now, I only got to try the bracelet and the rubber strap, and they're both pretty good. 
I think the rubber strap is a great option, and this is a pretty interesting color that matches the dial. Overall, it's really lightweight and just comfortable to wear, while the bracelet itself is also pretty good, and I really love how it pairs with the case. With brushed central links and polished sides, that just offers a fantastic contrast with the mostly polished case. The bracelet starts at 20mm and then tapers down to 18 before you get to a really nice milled clasp. Now, while the bracelet is heavier than that strap, it's almost as comfortable, and it just gives a great presence with the watch. So let's wrap things up by talking about value. And here you're looking at an early bird price of 649 euros, which I think is about 720 US. And that's for the Eta based movement. It's going to be a little bit less for the Soprod. Looking for comparable watches, I took a look at Steinhardt, as they're always known for great value. And I did find a number of their premium watches with a 2893 2. Although with the Cosmopolite, you are getting a higher grade movement. So I think it's a pretty good value overall, as GMTs are almost never cheap. When it's all said and done, I think the Cosmopolite is a well made, unique, and just striking GMT. It's definitely not a design you're going to see every day. Yet it's also a design with just a couple of minor hiccups that are holding it back and namely that's the bezel and the loom. Yet this is a Kickstarter watch, and one of the good things about Kickstarter is that some of these issues can be addressed before it goes into production, if enough people voice an opinion about it. So if you love the design and the vibrant colors here, don't let that hold you back from at least taking a look at it. For myself, while I love to look at these, I do question if these color schemes are really me in the long term. If I do decide to jump on it, I think I'd actually go for the Hong Kong colorway, or maybe this blacked out version if it's an option. The blue Amsterdam I think would be the safer choice, but there's just something about those other two I really like. Anyway, let me know what you think about the Cosmopolite down below in a comment, or if you can think of any other GMTs I should take a look at. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me.